How's it going lads? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today what I've got for you is a video teaching you guys or helping you guys win Team of the Season Rice and Team of the Season Lucas Digne a little bit quicker than you were doing it before. Team of the Season is finally here. If you're looking to get yourself any coins from the best supplier in town, check out my sponsor, FIFACoinZone.com and use the code HABER to get yourself 5% off. Last night on Friday, EA dropped brand new weekly objectives. And in the objectives, we have a Team of the Season Lucas Digne, a Team of the Season Gomez, and a Team of the Season Declan Rice. Now, Team of the Season Gomez is pretty simple. Win five online single matches using 11 Saudi Professional League players. I personally am not going to go for that card because... I don't need it and I don't want it. It is a free 89 rated team of the season card. If you do want to put yourself through it, personally, I don't need an 89 rated card right now. If I get bored later on in the week, I might put myself through it. But until then, probably not. But I will be getting myself Lucas Digne and I've already got myself Declan Rice because they're not as difficult as you may think on the surface. And I'm going to help you guys get them a little bit easier. Now, this Declan Rice card looked absolutely incredible and is definitely worth you spending time to try and work towards it because this card, honestly... The, the stats are really decent. He's six foot one with 94 jumping. That is incredible. 88 stamina is very good. 94 strength is incredible. Very good defensive stats. Decent passing stats. Okay dribbling stats and decent pace stats as well. Um, and this is the team that I actually used to get Declan Rice. Now, what I did was I went for an English front three in a 4-3-3 and then just went with my usual team, but Valencia at right back to get the link to Sterling to their Dumfries, um, which I kind of regret doing because Valencia is going to be trying to... I'm going to be using Valencia to complete two of them. Now, Declan Rice took me two games and... And I won both games, I think, like 11-0. Um, it wasn't difficult for me at all. Now, I appreciate that it will be a little bit harder for the player that is maybe less able. But and I know a lot of you guys won't be able to build a team like this. But if you can get a decent front three, like, for example, um, Rashford, uh, Scott Sinclair, and Sterling, I think you'll be able to do it quite easily. Now, if you look, I've got actually five assists on, uh, on, on Scott Sinclair, seven assists on Rashford, five assists on Sterling. Now, what I was doing, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I was just going straight down either the wings or passing it straight across to Rashford. Um, what you want to do really is get yourself a front three and then go with your usual midfield because you'll find it a lot easier to create chances and, uh, and to push the ball up with your usual midfield and then just having like a Rashford, Sterling or Scott Sinclair. Now, in terms of squad battles, I didn't play a single difficult game and the reason that was is because I made sure that I, I tried to play these kind of teams. Make sure you keep refreshing your squads until you find a 60 rated team with like 50 chemistry, for example, like this. My first team, actually, I got very lucky. I had a 59 rated team with 40 chemistry and it had a Saudi league center mid in goal uh, so I was just banging in long shots and it was actually quite easy it was disappointing that I didn't manage to complete it in one but you can literally just keep updating your squads until you find really poor teams. Now, these are the kind of teams I would personally do it on. Uh, I would personally go for the 60 rated teams with like 60 chemistry um, and only try and play these teams if you aren't as good as, as maybe, um, you're not maybe a gold one elite three player or you're not maybe not a good player and you don't think you're very good against uh, squad battles. Because world class is difficult, but when they've got these kind of teams, it's a lot easier. It is a lot easier. So if I were you, I would just keep refreshing until you get a team like this. Now, I've been biggest piece of advice is don't go for just one English player. For example, if I was to go for uh, for a couple of Premier League players and then Rashford, I'd struggle a lot. And the reason that is, is because when you're attacking, you only have one option going forward to get the assist with. So you're going to find yourself passing it along the edge of the box until you find an English player, for example, your one English player, which would be Rashford, uh, to then get the assist. You want to go for a front three, even if it lessens your team a little bit, you want to go for at least a front three, maybe even some midfielders. And the reason I say that is because you want to find it easier to to get the ball and work the ball towards that player towards uh, for example uh your scott sinclair your rashford your sterling and with three players there you'll find naturally one of them has the ball at, at most of the time when you're attacking and it makes it easier to just get an assist with them because you just have to pay it off to someone that's going to score it's not that difficult uh what i'll do is i will play some clips on the screen now of me literally just working the ball through and scoring some pretty nice goals against bronze keepers it is really easy no matter who you've got there is of course a lone firmino in the uh in the objectives as well if you guys want to go for that i recommend playing and maybe it can behind some english players because he will score some absolute bangers against pretty poor players and all you have to do is win three squad but ba squad battles matches with a squad with specified requirements and it's liverpool players in three brazilian players in three and it's on professional difficulty and that card for 10 games will be absolutely incredible now do not worry at all if you can't do it in in the first couple of games the reason i say that is because at the end of the day you're still working towards squad battle rewards at the end of the week and the more games you play the higher you'll get in squad battles the better packs you'll get on sunday night 
and maybe you get yourself like a team of the season or you can get yourself like uh, someone that will sell for a little bit and you've made yourself a little bit of coins back as well. So do not worry. And of course, you do get a foot swap player in squad battles usually. So if you finish at least silver three, you'll get a foot swap player, which is not bad at all. And I've just realized that yeah, actually released man of the matches last night. That's pretty interesting. They've not tweeted out anything about it. Um, I see nothing on their Twitter account, but hey, as you can see at the bottom right there, they've released man of the matches. Okay, now let's talk about Lucas Digne. This one is the harder one. This one is just a little bit harder. Um, unfortunately, you have to do this one in Rivals, which sucks if you are in Division 1 like myself because everyone is so sweaty in Division 1. By the way, Ericsson is absolutely incredible in this game. He is one of the best players I think I've ever used on FIFA. He's just absolutely nuts, this Tots Ericsson is. Anyway, uh, you have to score five goals. Sorry, you have to assist five goals with defenders from the Premier League. Uh, in five different rival wins not even games wins and it's already difficult enough to assist a, a, a goal with a defender um, and it's just they've just made it even harder because you have to win the game as well as assist a goal so you've got to focus on score uh, uh, sorry assisting with a defender and then you have to win the game after it's not hard it's not easy at all it's pretty difficult so what I've decided to do is I have compiled a list of the best uh, passes from the Premier League in defense. I went through and I looked over on FootWiz. So must shout out to FootWiz for having a decent site to, to look at. Um, this is what I've gone for. So for expensive options at left back, we have, uh, for example, the Europa League uh, Marcus Alonso, which isn't available in packs or isn't available on the store. So if you've got him, you're really lucky. If you haven't, that's unlucky. There's Foot Birthday Salah, there's Team of the Season and Inform 88 Robertson. There is, of course, the Carnival Mendy. So if you did that card, of course, you got that as well, which has got decent passing and Flashback Bane. So also isn't available now. The cheaper options for under like 50k, we have got uh ashley young's ucl card because it has like 81 or 82 uh passing uh and pretty decent crossing so that is an option and it's only about five thousand coins or you've got uh scream tyrone mings who is about 25k and has 99 pace and 99 passing which might be a good option for you as well so if i were you i'd look to those kind of options um over on the left back spot now in terms of right backs for expensive, we have got Trent Alexander Arnold's inform, sorry, not inform, uh, Future Stars and Team of the Season card. We have got Aurea, um, his 90 rated UCL card. Uh, we have got Team of the Season Doherty. We have got uh, Carnival Bellerin. We have got the Valencia card, which I'm using. I don't want to talk about what just happened. We've got the, <laughs> we've got the end of an era. Valencia, of course, isn't available on the store or anything like that. But I have got his loan card. If you were, if you did his loan card, then of course you can use that as well. Eight some passing is pretty decent. Team of the season one, Basaka. And then we've got Inform Ricardo Pereira, who kind of falls on the line because he's about 50,000 coins, which I'd consider on the cheaper side, but also maybe on the expensive side as well, who's got decent passing and might be a good option. And then the cheap side, we've got Man of the Match Doherty, who's about 35, 40k. And we have got uh, Kieran Trippier's UCL card and his normal card, which are on the cheaper side as well. Now, in terms of centre backs, there is uh, Virgil van Dijk, most of his cards. Uh, David Luiz, uh, Team of Season Laporte. Uh, David Luiz's flashback card, by the way, which I'm using at CDM. Team of Season Laporte. Laporte, uh, Team of Season Older v uh, Inform 87 and 86 Shaw, and Inform 87 rated centre back Fabinho. And then in the cheap side, there isn't really any cheap side, uh, any cheap uh, defenders that have like any decent passing stats, unfortunately, at the centre back spot. So, uh, so I wouldn't, I would personally, if you haven't got that many coins, just go for solid defenders that are gonna, uh, you know, help you save yourself from the game and only change up your team massively if you think that you can actually win with the team you change it to. Now, what I have decided to do is. Formations wise, I've gone with what I usually use, which is a 4 1 2 2 narrow, because I feel like changing up your formation and, and play style too much will be uh, more difficult than it is uh, helping you. Now, what I've done in terms of custom tactics, I'll show you guys uh, in game. I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap in game from what I start, and I'm actually going to play Ericsson at camp, David Luiz at left center mid, Vieira at CDM, Matthias at right center mid. I'm still playing the fullbacks at the fullback position and the wingbacks at the wingback position. Um, but what I've done is I've got press after possession loss, and I've got fast build up. As you see, I've got really high width on defense because I want them to play out wide. And I don't know why something just fell off my desk. And I've got um, high width as well offensively. Now, you're probably wondering, why have you got a high width offensively? You're playing a 4 one 2 one 2 narrow. It just widens out the play with the players going up. Now, in terms of instructions, I have gone with uh, join the attack and overlap on both my right back and left back. Stay back while attacking for both my CDM and right center mid. So I've got players coming back. David Luiz, I think, is also on get forward and cover wing. 
wing. So he's going to be playing as an attacking midfielder. Now, bearing in mind, David Luiz doesn't have the world's best stamina stats. So unfortunately, you're going to have to have a sub. If you do manage to get a goal or assist with him, I'd sub him off around half time, maybe a little bit after because he will be dead. Uh, and then I've got obviously the boys up top, uh, Eusebio, Ibrahimovic, and then I've got uh, Ericsson there as well. Now, uh, the reason I've gone with Ibra up top as opposed to my usual Butcher Gueno is because I was trying to get crosses in with the left back and right back. Um, that's probably the easiest way you'll find to do it. I would also look to maybe do a five at the back and do a really wide uh, defensive push up the field with five back to try and cross it in. Uh, aside from that, Honestly, best of luck because you need to remember that you're going to have to defend quite well as well in these games because people are going to go very attacking if you go one or two goals down. So just remember that you're going to have to play very defensive. And if you have, of course, maybe maybe you've got yourself uh, a foot birthday Lukaku, uh, Romelu Lukaku that you've done the objective for. I would personally play him, or sorry, not the object, the FCBC. I would personally start him at centre-back, and then if he can splurge on maybe a striker Van Dijk and swap them in-game or something like that, you'll benefit highly from that as well, because Van, uh, remember, Lukaku is a base centre-back card, and even if you play centre-back to a striker, it still counts, no matter what. It still counts where you play them. You can't just play a striker at centre-back, uh, though. So, however, if I was to play Deli Ali at centre back, if I got an assist with Deli Ali from there, it would not count. Um, however, if I was to do this in game uh, and I was to start like that, if I got an assist with Van Dyke, it would count. So, if I were you, I would look to try and uh, maybe change a few things up. That's why I'm going with the David Luiz at centre uh, centre mid because he's got incredible stats and uh, I feel like he'd be really good. And uh, I've already done one. I took one off. I actually got an assist with uh, with Marcus Alonso, um, who is probably the weaker in my team, but uh, but he does actually do a shift. You you know, he does a good shift at that left back spot. So best of luck to you. Um, hopefully you can get them done pretty quickly. Hopefully my advice helps you out. If it did, a like's always appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Thank you for watching. Don't be that guy. I know Xbox users, I know there's a way where you can uh, glitch yourself into a win. I know there's a way where you can, I'm not going to try and, you know, if anyone tries commenting how to do it, I'm going to remove all the comments and stuff like that. I'm not trying to encourage people to do this. I know there's a way where you can, like, if you score, you can DC the match and you get the win. Just don't. You just like honestly, you're just providing a, a poor experience for the player on the other end just to save yourself a, a, a couple of hours. There's just no point. There's just no point to be honest. I don't really, I don't want to promote that. I don't think it's a good thing to do. Um, so I recommend just you know not doing that. All right, just don't do that. There's no point. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate the support lately, and I'll see you lads later. <laughs>